Cal's gone with the same lineup he went with Saturday to start at State Farm Arena. Louisville's responded without J.J. Trainer and Dennis Evans again in the lineup tonight. The Cards are with their lineup for the second straight ball game, and here's the Cats and the rookie Wagner. The grad transfer is Mitchell, and this is Bradshaw, who's been terrific as of late. Can you stay in front of Kentucky for 40 minutes? That is the question for the team in red. Reeves on the drive, defended in Huntley Hatfield, the deflection. And here are the cards and the freshman from Brooklyn, Tyler Johnson. West Louisville is a downhill driving team. Their strength is getting to the foul line. Kentucky cannot foul in this ball game. Huntley Hatfield. Any momentum, good momentum for Kenny Payne right now. And a great way to start the game by hammering the thing inside, going right at Bradshaw. DJ Wagner averaging 12 and a half points, six assists in his last two. Early ball screen action, Louisville impacting that ball, not letting Kentucky turn the corner with ease. Edwards, and here's Wagner with seven to shoot. Lost it in traffic to Johnson. Downhill they go. Johnson draws the foul. The depth favors Kentucky. Kentucky wants to play in an 80 to 85 possession game, and Kenny Payne knows it. If you're Kenny Payne, you've told your guys, we've got to drive it, get to the foul line, allow our legs to, to rest a little bit at the free throw line once they get to the bonus. But a good start for the cards. Sky Clark's the Illinois transfer. Leads them in scoring at 15 and a half. Johnson a three, and that's blocked out of bounds by Trey Mitchell. John Calipari told his team today, Jimmy, do not let them start downhill with the basketball. And that's what's happened on two tries. Here. Well, while Louisville comes in making, what, five threes a game at 28%. You've got to guard these guys off the bounce if you're Kentucky. Seven to shoot, and here is Johnson. Trying to take Reeves into traffic. Huntley Hatfield had it stripped out of there. And Mitchell collects. Well, but Johnson is getting into that paint early with ease for Louisville. Here's the senior, Reeves. Three ball from Edwards. Mike James. And now here's Clark again. Johnson, oh my, behind the back. Kick into the corner for a James three. It's so far to me, it's all about the ability of Tyler Johnson to get inside that Kentucky defense. Four in red has speed right now that's causing the Cats problems early. Edwards, tough shot. And Huntley Hatfield had a crack at it, I believe, last touch by the Cats. Uh, that's not good offense by Kentucky after Johnson once again bites off that red part of the floor. And that's an easy dial up for Mike James out of the corner, his 13th three point make of the year. Kenny Payne talked to us before the game. Threes are better than twos for his team uh, right now. In, in math, I wasn't a math major, but I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> Unforced error in the front court for the cards. First turnover. Calipari goes to the bench. Reed Shepard has come into the ball game. The freshman from London, Kentucky. And the Uber athlete is Rob Dillingham. Zero in the blue for Kentucky. And the guard productivity for Kentucky just went up a level with Shepard and Dillingham checking in. Yep. This kid with the ball is the best shooter in all of college basketball. Shepard on the drive. Defended well again. Huntley Hatfield another rebound. Look ahead for Tyler Johnson. Challenges and had it blocked out of bounds by Bradshaw. Bradshaw blocked the ball and he also blocked Johnson. I mean a ton of contact. I know the play of verticality is what the officials are looking at. The four to me right there gets smoked and no foul call, but the aggressive fight for Louisville, impressive the first three minutes. White. Had it knocked away, catch, tighten the screws defensively, Reeves in transition, throws it up on the glass, and a foul on Louisville. And Kenny Payne asked Lee Cassell right away, what about down at the other end? He's not happy at all with the missed call after White picks up the foul in transition for Louisville. 
I was confident coming in that you would see a massive, massive effort from Louisville tonight. Now, they've been close. They've lost a lot of games in that 8-10 to 10 point range, a heartbreaker to Texas early on a lean-back fadeaway by Aismas. But this game means way more than any game that these two teams have been in so far this year. Dillingham, here's Reeves quickly to Shepard. Eleven to shoot. Clark rubbing through the Mitchell screen, stuck with it in traffic. Dillingham a three. White the backside rebound, and now we've got it looked like James and Mitchell underneath the basket, up near the stanchion here, and Ron Gruber has called Mike James for the foul. His first second on the bill. I do not mind the foul by Mike James comes rushing in you've got to set the rules and say we're going to be the aggressor in this game you're the underdog you've been knocked around in college basketball the last year and a month and you've got to answer early how you're going to play Dillingham a miss and a foul called on Clark a flyby got Dillingham on the wrist Dick Clark it'll be his first third on the cards and here goes Dillingham to the line to try and get Kentucky on the board Jimmy in the first three and a half minutes here yeah, Rob Dillingham is a special, special talent. And he's a kid that's hard to guard, Wes, because he is an absolute effortless shot maker. It comes easy for him squeezing those things off. And I love the fact that he's risky and fast with the ball and a little bit careless at times, but he's dialed it back under Cal, and he has that Coach Cal confident swagger that Cal's best guards have always had. Those three things, to me, make him very hard to guard. Yep. Terrific freshman. And he's got the cats on the board here. He's averaged 17 points and 40% from the floor in his last couple of games. Bought two of the three. And here is Johnson into the front court against Shepard. On the drive, Johnson tried to scoop it out of there. Mitchell got a piece of it. Here's Kentucky off a of Louisville turnover and a three ball from Reeves. And not a good rim decision by Tyler Johnson in Kentucky. They are so good and so fast running to the deep corner in transition for those bombs and conversion offense. Five in a row by UK. Johnson tried to get it to Huntley Hatfield. Nice catch and score by the Tennessee transfer. When Huntley Hatfield is active, he's going to set 20 to 25 ball screens per game. So far, he's tracking that number. Dillingham crosses over James, spins, and scores. That's what I'm talking about. That was a risky move with the ball, a fast, risky move that he has under control. So difficult to stay in front of zero in white. Johnson again on the attack. Step back on Shepard. Louisville's getting good shots, Jimmy. And what did Cal also tell our guys? Do not be surprised if Louisville doesn't hang with us the first seven or eight minutes. The fight, the passion, everything they're going to bring. we got to hang in there. And now Kentucky already up two with five minutes burned. Yeah, four in a row for Dillingham's, followed by five in a row from Reeves. That's the Cats nine here, and they've got the lead for the first time. And the ballot scoring of Kentucky, six guys in double figures. Hard to guard individuals, hard to guard as a group. Nine to shoot, Huntley Hatfield on the drive, and it rolls in. West it's all five guys are just hooping a little bit for Louisville. Trying to play in space, not afraid to let their five attack Kentucky's five off the bounce. Mitchell backing down James and scores. He is such a good player, and it's a good sign for Kentucky. Bradshaw and Mitchell playing together in an 80-possession game against North Carolina, playing heavy minutes, not having to slow down with Bradshaw now on the floor. Sky Clark shoots and hits. 16th three of the year for Clark. Yeah, just a 27% three-point shooter. Kenny Payne told us they have practiced this week in scrimmages only taking threes, trying to increase the confidence and the numbers of that three-point shot. Mitchell the miss. Bradshaw the backside rebound. Missed the stick back. Got a third crack at it and threw it away to Reeves. Wow. Timeout in Louisville. Battle of the Bluegrass is on tonight.
up, guys? It's Curtis Williams here with the Louisville Cardinals. Uh, I want to give us fears were coming down his face. And I said, Mr. Bill, are you okay? He looked just straight ahead and said, we're playing Louisville today, son. We're playing Louisville. <laughs> I knew then, as a 27-year-old assistant, yeah. this game was different, and it is, and it always will be. They started 1913 in Lexington. Kentucky won 34 to 10. Louisville lost the first four meetings in the series. Of course, they played a year ago at Rupp. Cats won by 23. Mitchell, three ball at the front, puts Kentucky back in the lead. That is the danger. You switch and you don't switch back quick enough. Trey Mitchell just pops out for an open three. The arrow has come on the floor for the Cats. Here's Huntley Hatfield and a jump ball. It'll stay with the cards. He got tied up with Mitchell. Did Brandon Huntley Hatfield. Remember Huntley Hatfield, 13 starts in Tennessee as a freshman. And he has to produce in this game and going forward for Louisville and be a force. I mean, he was a top 50 kid out of high school. And I like the fact that Kenny Payne has called his number early. Yeah. Felt like his confidence has come back. A year ago, thought he played as if he was still trying to build back from his transfer. Here's Clark wheeling and dealing in traffic and draws the foul. So Clark will get a couple of free throws after Wagner's second foul and the second on the Cats. Don't forget, we got good college basketball for you tomorrow night, 9 o'clock out at Pauley Pavilion. Maryland's won three straight. They'll meet UCLA and the rookie guard Sebastian Mack. Of course, Jameer Young for the Terps, averaging almost 18 a game. Maryland's lost all four of their road games. They'll try and correct that tomorrow night in Westwood. Right, UCLA, Notre Dame, and Louisville, the three youngest teams in college ball this year in terms of Division I experience. And this kid on the free throw line, Sky Clark, he has taken 43 shots off the bounce and 57 layups. 100 of 141 attempts are off the bounce, and Kentucky has got to stay in front of not only Johnson, but 55 in red as well. 81% free throw shooter, missed them both. Shepard. There it is again. And Mitchell left for the three. Bounced out. Curtis Williams on the floor, the freshman from Detroit. Wes, that's a big gamble to switch like that and not switch back, and you're leaving... A Kentucky team that makes 10 threes per game with one of their better shooters wide open. Clark, oh, split the screen. In the corner, Trey White a three. That'll bound away. Shepard tries to get the Cats in transition, and this is Edwards. And he bowls over Clark. And an offensive foul on the freshman, Justin Edwards. Yeah, Edwards had his mind made up at the timeline. He was going to get all the way to the rack. And I've heard people say you can't take a charge in college basketball. Well, that is a false statement because you can. You get those, those feet set before that plant foot hits the ground. A fast play and a right call and a good defensive play by Louisville. You see Edwards go to Calipari's bench here. So they got Fierro, Reeves, Shepard, Mitchell, and Dillingham on the floor now for UK. Glenn to White. Here is Williams, averaging just four points, but coming off a season I 16 in the win against Pepperdine. Ten to shoot. Huntley Hatfield into traffic with a right hand and scores. They swarmed him, but they didn't swarm him quick enough. And he got that shot off through three white jerseys. If you want to stay in a ball game when you're the underdog, you pound that thing inside like Louisville has so far to Huntley Hatfield. Dillingham. Three spins out. Clark wanted a screen. Shake and foul by Dillingham. Losing their discipline, Kentucky, a couple of times early. And Huntley Hatfield playing with force. A terrific job of posting up. Watching play through contact and a lot of white jerseys. Left shoulder, right paw. Louisville hanging in. Driving the ball, forcing the ball around the rim with through contact. And he has got to be the anchor for Kenny Payne's team right now. He's going to get a breather, but I mean, that's a terrific start. Perfect from the field, setting the tone, setting the rules of how Louisville wants to play this game. Really well done. I mean, he's a former top, the, top 50 kid out of high school. Like, there, there's talent on this Louisville roster that is not equated to the number of wins that it should. And he didn't know. 
Dunner talking with Danny Manning off the bench. Also with some of the other cards down at that end of the floor. And meanwhile, here is Clark, who missed two free throws earlier. And he'll drop in the first there. And Wes, to my point about Louisville's talent, I mean, right. Sky Clark chose Illinois over the likes of Kentucky coming out of high school. So that tells you this kid here now, he's another top 50 kid at the high school ranks, set up a second semester at Illinois before the transfer, but he is capable and wears 55 because of Jason Williams. If he handles it like Jason Williams, he's going to be in good shape. <laughs> but right now, he's only one of five at the line, and he's 81%. Here's Reeves quickly in transition. Okorafor blocked it, but it's called goaltending by Lee Cassell. Now you see Kentucky, though, they are off to the races in their conversion offense. I believe Kentucky wants to get into the legs of Louisville. Louisville does not have the depth. Still without two key guys, J.J. Trainer and Dennis mm. Evans. So Kenny's bench is a lot shorter than Cal's. Here's White. Nice shot off the screen. They're getting good looks, Jimmy, and that's yeah. what Kenny Payne said. We got to get good looks. Absolutely. Just simple pin down action and right into a 15 foot pull up. Ugana Onyenso has also come on the floor for the Cats for the first time. He wears 33. And here's the arrow a three. Wow. Third triple of the year for a do. And he is typically a drive the ball on yeah. the catch kid. 25% on the year, but he is a major player for Kentucky. Gets one rebound every four minutes, just full of energy. Trying to answer at the other end. Williams triple goes bouncing away. Here comes that Kentucky run game. Yep. Shepard. The arrow. And look at Reeves slide through traffic. Got the runner to fall. And very quietly, Antonio Reeves has got nine to lead all scores. Interesting that Antonio Reeves was actually recruited back to Kentucky for his last year by this year's freshman class in a, in a group text saying, you are the missing piece for us to do something special. And his ability to make a three in the runners in the layup game. Terrific balance out of 12 in white. Largest lead of the ball game for Kentucky. Here's Clark why? and a foul by Reeves. I say why, but why Kentucky continues to lose their feet on the defensive end. And that runner by Antonio Reeves, he shoots it as well as anybody I've seen this year in college basketball. And he's all of 6'6". Six, six. Kentucky moves that ball around. That has a four-round one set with Onyenso on the inside. They run a lot of five out as well. I just think Kentucky, they, they've got that look again. And they beat a really good North Carolina team last Saturday. North Carolina took Oklahoma off the, unbitten, uh, the unbeaten list last night. Here's Clark, first of two. And he's one of six now at the line. Wow. And we're talking about an 81% free throw shooter. So Scott Clark got to hit the tee shot in the fairway here for <laughs> Kenny Payne. You just put it in my terms, my man. <laughs> yeah, get, get the three wood out. No more driver. Hmm. There you go. Just stay with the three wood the rest of the game, Sky. You're fine. Three point game and a little pressure offered now by the cars. Yeah, and Louisville's good with high hands in their press, but this is a hard team to press. Kentucky Reeves, it rattles around yeah, and drops because, in. Yeah, because of that, they got too many shooters, I think, to extend your defense and let shooters get loose on the back end. I don't like that Louisville press in this ball game. Chicago senior now with a dozen. Leading score for Kentucky, fourth best in the SEC coming in is Antonio Reeves. Williams thinks Shepard might have got a piece of it. Huntley Hatfield shot clock did not reset. Five for Clark. Downhill he goes and turns it over. Edwards tries to beat White to the rack, and Trey White will pay for it with his second foul. Yeah, hope is not a plan. I'm telling you, and you drive that ball baseline, hoping that someone is at the front of the rim for Louisville on their offensive end. It's a turnover waiting to happen. That's what I'm talking about. Drive it, hope someone's there. No, the white jersey just ate it up. And that's that team speed of Kentucky is as good as I've seen Cal have in a long, long time. Back in for the cards, number four, Tyler Johnson. So Tyler Johnson has returned there for the cards. Kentucky's biggest advantage of six. 
And the foul was before the shot by Edwards, so no free throws for the Philadelphia freshman. And a baseline inbounds opportunity for Shepard. Edwards. He got the two anyway. Yeah, really good action to get him running to his right shoulders. You can catch it right into the left shot. Simple out of bounds play that Louisville just didn't have the fight factor to get over that screen. First basket of the ball game for Justin Edwards. Into the corner, James a three. Huntley Hatfield couldn't get to it. Eight point lead for Kentucky with 8.45 to go. Danger zone for Louisville right now. Shepard and one. This kid is so good because he does so many things. He understands, first of all, how important that Kentucky jersey is with his mom and dad, both Kentucky alums. But he is a special, special, not only talent, but how he goes about his game and why he is hard to guard. Is Look at these things right here. He's a 57, 59, 93 guy. Those are his percentages from the two, from the three, and from the free throw line. He has a knack to get open, and his IQ, Wes, is his speed. Mm. He's not the, the fastest guy on that Kentucky lineup, just lane to lane. And when I look at him, how, how hard he comes off the screens, how true he shoots that basketball, the size that he plays with. Now, he's the real deal if you put him on an NBA team with a star and space in that floor. Look at James, the hard drive, knocked around Dillingham, the rebound. It's an 8-0 run for Kentucky. They've hit their last six on the floor. Make it seven. And now Louisville can't stay in front of the basketball. Man, that conversion offense from defense to the offensive end. Kentucky and the Big Blue Nation rises up in the Yum Center. I love that. It so is the, best the gift I've seen season, this right? year, but yeah. only Coach Cal would be digging through a pile at Costco. <laughs> maybe on a game day. I'm not sure, but that's that's some good stuff right there. <laughs> Here is Johnson, five to shoot. Williams in a bit of a trap against Dillingham. Fall away. Got it. Yeah, you're going to have to have some of those hanging this game. You don't want to take hard guarded shots. It certainly helps if you can make a couple. Kentucky on a 10-0 run. They'd hit seven in a row prior to the Cardinal make there. Look at that Kentucky bench with 12 points already in this game. Louisville with none. Reeves inside. Bradshaw on the perimeter for Thierro. And a second chance. Dillingham made the save last touched, I believe, by Tyler Johnson. You said danger zone, the Williams bucket certainly helps Louisville, but you got to go back to what you were doing earlier defensively in terms of your hands and guarding, Jimmy. Yeah, you've got to get some stops because Kentucky right now tracking, you know, well over 40 points in the first half. I don't think Louisville has that much offense to hang in a, a game that gets in the 80s or higher. Third chance at the possession. Reeves with the right hand. Yeah, he's so good, man. He's such a tough cover. You get focused in on the, the talent that jumps off in that freshman class. And forget about Reeves, who's their leading scorer, 17 a game. 14 now for Reeves on his sixth field goal. And he's six of seven from the floor in this first half of the Cats. And we're going to get a foul on Dillingham, which is his second. Wagner already has two and six on Kentucky. The ability of Reed to hit those runners and really tough guarded twos is very impressive. And we've seen him be a lightning rod as a scorer. And he went for over 30 on the road last year at Arkansas. But his game has really grown, West on the offensive end. He, yeah. he can do it all from every, every spot on the floor. Johnson looking for an entry point. Here's White with Edwards defending. Back to Johnson. Huntley Hatfield off the baseline. He stays perfect. Jimmy's got 10. Well, he's made nice plays out of the dunker spot, and he's settled in right there knowing that Bradshaw is going to be attracted to the ball at the rim. He's had two straight double-doubles as Huntley Hatfield. He's in double-figure scoring in this first half. 
Three ball there for Mitchell. And people said that the game of basketball has passed Coach Calipari by. <laughs> And that's a narrative that was created by guys that have never coached and never played the game because Kentucky right now averaging 25, 26 three-point attempts per game. And he plays to his talent. His talent has. He's got skilled guys this year. And Calipari's got his swagger back as well. And it all starts with that guy. Yep. Everyone talks about, I want a players-driven team. I don't. I want the head coach to drive the vibe. And you look at the best ones out there. I was with Kelvin Sampson last Saturday. His team starts with him. Mm. Cal's best teams have always started with him. Same way with Bill Self, just keep on going down the line. Rick Barnes of Tennessee, those are the guys setting that tone every day. Front end of a one and one for Johnson is good. Well, and Kentucky is ascending. If Louisville is going to build anything momentum wise, it's gonna have to be with this kid at the point. It is because his speed can match Kentucky's speed. And here's this press again that I'm not in love with. It may change as the game goes on. Kentucky just smacks it. They get the numbers right off the bat. Under six to go in this first half. A handful of possessions by Louisville so far this year. Mitchell left it on the front of the rim and Huntley Hatfield another rebound. Cards with the ball at home down 12, and Clark gets the bounce. They're just hooping. Well, Louisville's just hooping on the offensive end as much as anything. They got some sprint up ball screen actions going on, but Kenny Payne turned his talent loose to see if they can hang in this game. Shepard a deep three. Long rebound for Johnson, and a foul call. Lee Cassell on the baseline. I think Trey White. If so, it'll be his third. Not a lot of contact by White, but enough to knock Bradshaw out of the play. Coming into tonight, Wes, Louisville has only played 10 possessions of zone. Mm -hmm. And they go to it because they see the same thing I do. We're having trouble staying in front of the ball. The man is a gamble the way Kentucky shoots this thing. So White's on the bench, first player in the ball game with three. Wildcats have a pair of players with two. Wagner and Dillingham. Five to shoot for Shepard. Squares and hits. He does not get rushed and did not feel the pressure of the shot clock ticking down in his head. Man, that kid's good. There will be a lot of puppies and kids named Reed over the next <laughs> nine or ten months in the Bluegrass State, I promise. Here's James in traffic, blocked, but fouled on the way up. Well, you wonder if Reed Shepard, before he was born, they were telling him stories about UK U of L. Yeah, absolutely they were. And, I mean, I've been so impressed. This kid came in, not the most heralded of that freshman class. But he has shot up the charts in everybody's eyes, and rightfully so. His shooting numbers, he is number one in the nation when you factor in your true shooting percentage, which factors in the free throw stripe as well. Hmm. Fourth and point of the half for Mike James. And Jimmy, the thing about it is, your dad was the most outstanding player of a Final Four, a terrific player. Your mom was a terrific player. I mean, it's a storybook playing out it in is. front of us. And the value of Kentucky kids that put on that Kentucky jersey, you, you cannot overstate. Yep. I, I remember Rex Chapman, when I was coaching the Kentucky, when he put that thing on, it just meant more. Uh, the Richie Farmers, the Darren Feldhouses yep. that have been out there. There's something different about those Kentucky kids. Cameron Mills, right? Yeah, keep on going. Yeah. Those guys' dads were stars. Here is James off the turnover, and Huntley Hatfield. He has been really, really good. The best I've seen this year, Huntley Hatfield. And he has outworked Kentucky's bigs on two or three occasions. You're going to run with Kentucky. You better make sure you finish on the other end. And Louisville, they were up against the rope. Now they're back off.
Th that's not how this game is supposed to be when Kentucky plays Louisville. And Louisville comes in with 10 Final Fours, three national titles or two, depends on what you look at from the NCAA. But this is one of the top brands in college basketball, Louisville, and they are not supposed to be down 20 at the half through their arch rival. Wagner was troubled with fouls, only played three and a half minutes in the first frame. He's back out there. Here is Mitchell, and now the freshman DJ Wagner. He'll gun for three. Back rim miss, and Mitchell touched it, hit a, took a hard fall. And I think they're going to get Sky Clark here for the heavy box out. Yeah, when DJ Wagner, when he chose Kentucky over Louisville, he kind of got a little bit of a peek about how this Louisville program was going to get off to a start under Kenny Payne. And you consider this grandfather as part of that Louisville staff, and Louisville couldn't rein him in. And then Louisville also lost a, a key five-star guy this year that was on campus for a couple of weeks before he transferred out. Talking about flowers, right? Yeah. Yeah. And those are the kind of talents you have to have when you're this Louisville brand. Here is White. He struggled in the first half as well, only a couple points and 12 minutes of action. But he had three first half fouls as well. Six to shoot. Here's James trying to beat Mitchell on the drive. Couldn't and knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Edwards. Good job by Mitchell to, I mean, he was on the hip of the offensive player by Louisville, but stayed off of him contact wise. If Kentucky can guard the ball in the second half, they're in great shape. Clark with one to shoot. Front rim miss of the three. Here is DJ Wagner. Dad played for Calipari at Memphis. Grandfather was a member of the 86 National Championship team in Dallas. Reeves all the way through. He'll draw the foul. And then Johnson slapped it after the ball got away. Just slapped it to the bench. And out of frustration, I think, more than anything else against Tyler Johnson. Yep, there it is. So Johnson draws another foul here, a common foul on this. A lot of frustration within this Louisville program. And that's a frustration swing at the ball by Tyler Johnson. So there's a foul on Johnson and then the common foul. That's two fouls. So really Johnson has picked up two fouls, which give him four in the ball game on the same play. And you look at Antonio Reeves, why he is so hard to guard. And his distribution of his shots, Wes, is about as good as you'll see from a big guard in college basketball. Hmm. His distribution of jump shots, runners, and layups. He's all right on tack. He's all of he's all of 6'6, six, six, but 74 jump shots coming in, 20 runners that he's attempted in 26 layups. That's a really good balance for a half-court offense from a big guard. And he's all of 6'6. Six, six, and very rarely rushed is Antonio Reeve this year in his fifth year. Fifth game of 20 or more here tonight. Jimmy. He's also matched his season high of 24 that he had in the ball game with Kansas. And now a chance to even push it higher, both his total and the Wildcats total. By the way, he's extended his uh, consecutive games with a three mark to 22 tonight. Senior from Chicago, started originally at Illinois State. Ironically, that is who Kentucky will play on the 29th. A week from tomorrow after their holiday break and Calipari said you guys don't want to see me and I don't see you all <laughs> earlier today. Here's James inside and fouled. He'll have a chance. I think Bradshaw has picked up another foul and for all of Aaron Bradshaw's good work the last two games and wins against Penn and Carolina. It's been a tough night for big number two out of Rahway, New Jersey. Yeah, it has. I mean the physical plays have bothered Bradshaw in this game. I thought he held up. I know he did really well against Baycott and was actually more physical than Armando Baycott when he 
went up against a North Carolina star over the weekend, but you got to remember this is just what his third game. He's just he's just getting his feet underneath him, but he is a special talent. And what I love about Kentucky when he's on the floor, the pace doesn't drop. The five out is still in play. Back in good for James. He has eight. And what happened in the first half when Louisville extended their press is Kentucky found open threes. Look at Wagner. Tried to leave it for Bradshaw, who caught it, but traveled first. No foul on the deck. Ron Groover tickets James with his second. It's the fourth on the bill here in the second half. And Dewan Wagner is as good as we have in the freshman class at doing that right there. And his ability to play low through contact. And what a sweet kid Dewan Wagner is. You and I were standing in the yeah. Starbucks line with him today. And just He's the kind of guy you just want to hang around. You become a better person, it feels like, yeah. just talking to him, right? Yeah, very enjoyable yeah. visit. And it was fun to catch up with him about, you know, finishing that first semester and kind of where things are. And here's White, a little bit of a lean in. Tough shot there, and here's Kentucky with DJ Wagner pushing. You say tough, I say bad. <laughs> <laughs> Tap follow. They give it to Justin Edwards. And with a tough, bad shot, it's a turnover. Yep. That Kentucky's just going to run right up your backside, if not out in front of you. It's a 26 point game now. Clark no, scoop and score. Nine, Nine for Clark. And almost three minutes into this second half, the Cats have just continued to roll here. And here's this zone by Louisville. Again, they came in having only played 10 possessions, and it's just so easy. Throw the ball to a playmaker, Mitchell, who's second on the team in assists. And then Bradshaw, so good out of that dunker spot. First basket for Bradshaw, who had averaged 14 and a half and seven rebounds in the last two coming in oh. on the drive and it rolls out we're going to get free throws coming mike james will go to the line don't forget new year's eve women's basketball quadruple header on the acc network starts at noon eastern brooke wyckoff takes number 21 florida state against Wake Forest and then Notre Dame Syracuse at two presented by Food Line and then there's Jeff Walls number 19 cards they'll meet Katie Myers Miami team and then State with Westmore and Virginia close down a busy New Year's Eve of women's basketball on ACC Network and the ESPN app speaking of Jeff Walls, oh, no. yeah. He just, yeah he just texted me he said he's sorry missed the game he's out recruiting yeah and in the world of the portal how much college basketball has changed but his team what 11 and 2 right now he sent all his kids home for Christmas break as well. He is, his, his young ladies are always right in the middle of that fight in March. Terrific coach, has done a terrific job here. On the drive, Bradshaw finds Wagner, hanger from 15. And Donalo Jovanovic, who's on the floor for the seventh time this year, wearing 13 for Louisville. Who trails by 24. James. And couldn't get the roll. And here go the Cats again. Ahead for Bradshaw. Couldn't flag it down. It'll go to the cards. Kentucky a little bit sloppy in this second half. And this is a Kentucky team with so much growth ahead of them. It gets sloppy and Cal goes right to his bench, not even four minutes in. Mm. Shepard and Dillingham checking in. And here comes Rob Dillingham, another guy that was handcuffed in the first half. Well, some foul trouble. So to me, this Kentucky freshman class is right there with the ones that set the bar for Kentucky when they made their run to the Elite Eight and their national championship team. I, I think they are that good, and they have that much growth in front of them. And that gives Kentucky's Big Blue Nation a lot of hope heading into SEC play in January. Rebound. Finally controlled by Mitchell. Looked like Caleb Glenn had a shot at it. Instead, it belongs to Dillingham. Quick into the corner for Mitchell. And James. And the card's clear. And, ooh, Dillingham gambled. Clark wins. 
Huntley Hatfield. Another classy jumper off the baseline for Huntley Hatfield. Yeah, he's the one guy that has caused problems for Kentucky. Yep. Really good at that short corner, 12 foot, making plays out of it, knocking down jump shots. Dillingham couldn't finish. Terrific move. Here's Clark. So you can come off of Hatfield when he sets that ball screen. He's not a shot threat from the perimeter. Oh! oh carving him up a little. Jovanovic, the Miami transfer. He has that in this year's freshman class. Jovanovic, by the way, Jimmy, made his first free throw right there after hitting his first field goal. Career night. Ah, kind of. He only played one game at Miami a year ago before he redshirted. He spent a lot of time injured, and that's an offensive foul on Fierro. Third. Four now, beg your pardon, on Kentucky. First on Hadou. Louisville's been in a lot of ball games this year. Eight, nine, ten point games. The, the, the two most disappointing games to me, they did not show up against DePaul or Arkansas State. Right. And that's when the talk really started getting turned up in this part of the state of Kentucky about Kenny Payne. Here's a drive from Dillingham into the corner for Wagner's three, and Huntley Hatfield, the backside rebound. Here's Clark ahead for Glenn against the arrow. Boy, couldn't finish it, and it is the, as Will Chamberlain used to call it, it's in the office tonight down low. Here goes Dillingham wow. off the window. I wow. talked about the riskiness that he plays with. That was a risky shot. Oh, man, he is effortless as a shot maker. Just special stuff out of Dillingham. Clark a two ball. Jimmy, there's no question DePaul and Arkansas State are kind of the bottom of it. Yeah. But we were talking with Kenny Payne earlier. If you don't have any confidence when you lose the close fit to Texas, then you lose the next day to Indiana. You Mentally, you got to rebuild as much as what you're doing physically, don't you? You do, yes. And no one understands Louisville basketball more than Kenny Payne. Yeah. And when he was hired, you're bringing in a former player on the national championship team, a 10-year terrific run as the right-hand guy to Cal at Kentucky with all those great recruiting classes coming in to get him out of the NBA. And he understands. He understands the pressure of this job and where they are and where they need to be. Yeah. And right now, they're, they're, they're not close. Well, I said it earlier, Louisville used to strike fear when they stepped on the floor. And it's been a long time since this Louisville program has struck fear into anybody. Shepard inside, here's Dillingham. Oh, my. Yeah, his versatility. Uh, he just inverts your offense and post up your guard. He is stronger than he looks. He's got eight in the ball game, four in this second half. The lead is 19. Clark on the drive. Ripped out of there, James, for Caleb Glenn. Hard drive into traffic. Glenn hit the deck. Here come the Cats. Spot up for Dillingham. Look out. Look out. Four in a row for the freshman from Hickory, North Carolina. He is the guy that you fear on film. When you break Kentucky down on Synergy, you turn the sound down and just watch, and you think, oh, my, we have our hands full with zero in white. Well, he's turned it up here in half, too. Saddled by foul trouble in the first half. Four in a row for Dillingham. Um, watching on film, the SEC with seven teams in the net top 40. The ACC comes in tonight, I believe, with five. But that SEC race... Kentucky is right there in the thick of it. Tennessee is older. Kentucky, I believe, 1 through 10 is probably a little more talented. And Auburn, although they lack a guaranteed pro, man, are they good. They're, only top, they're the only team in the SEC and the ACC in the top 20, both offense and defensive efficiency, are the Auburn Tigers. They are the real deal. Yeah. Onyenso defending Huntley Hatfield, who turned it over. Not the college football season more than that guy. Remember, he was benched. Yeah. And... 
His ability to extend plays, and I saw him last year at Arkansas when right. Bryce Young got hurt. And man, he, that guy in the open field is like LeBron James bringing it in transition. <laughs> Big guy. I tell you this, I would not count out either Sark or Kalen DeBoer in the Sugar Bowl, right. either one, to meet whoever wins between Alabama and Michigan. You talk to the blue bloods of college football. What a pass. There's a great look. Onyenso had it blocked. That is uh, Emmanuel Okor for. The game is 19 with almost nine minutes gone second half here. Wes, I look at Kentucky and I look how young they are and you think about it only two of the past 20 teams that made it to the final four started a freshman at the point guard spot mm. and that's what Kentucky's rolling with yeah yeah but these freshmen are not the typical freshmen and it, it can be done it's not easy a lot of growth ahead of these Kentucky guards the last national champion to start a true freshman was Kihei Clark for Virginia in 2019. Jalen Suggs got his team to the title game in 21. Mitchell a three. A core four tried to capture it. Instead, it bounds away for Williams. Lead still 21 for UK. There's Williams. Will pull up that rattles out. Jimmy, you gave me a stat earlier. Oh, wait a second. Now you got to pause when Dillingham's in transition. Trey White out of there. I don't think Cal is pleased with the decisions by Dillingham the last couple of minutes. Here's Shepard for Reeves. I like that decision. James the foul. Antonio Reeves continues to have a night for the Wildcats. You've got to protect those airborne guys on the offensive end and that shove right there Reeves has to hold on to that rim to keep from coming down in a bad spot You told me earlier today That I told you a lot today. No, where, no. where are you going here? But 2004 <laughs> worries me 2004 <laughs> was the start of a streak that if a team was not 12th or higher Yeah, in week six of the AP poll they didn't vote their national champion comes from that list of yes. teams so if you go back and look at last week's AP poll, the top 12, history tells us right now since 2004, your national champion is coming out of that group of 12. Now, Kentucky was not in that group last week. They were just outside of it. They're inside of it now. So they'll have to break that trend, but they're more than capable of doing it. But Purdue's terrific, Arizona's terrific, UConn, Marquette, Kansas, a lot of good ones. But this Kentucky team is gonna be right there with the best of them, I think, when we get to March. Yeah. Well, they're showing their wares, and then the Cats, an unforced error. Okorafor got the dunk. And now the step over the line on the inbounds pass, and Pat Adams promptly calls for the turnover to belong to Louisville. Well, Kentucky can't go on Christmas break yet. And Cal's going to give his guys four days off, but they still have ten minutes to finish in this game, playing the game the right way. And Ron Groover getting a little, uh, trying to get the game management set here. So it's a clock issue. They want to double check here. They'll send the teams to the benches. And Kenny Payne. And John Calipari will huddle with their two teams. Jimmy, you mentioned Kentucky, ninth in the country. This is their first road game of the year. Uh, they won their last three a season ago when they went six and four on the road. They're going to play Illinois State a week from Friday. They're going to open SEC play at Florida. Yep. And the Gators the other night in Charlotte, Louisville scenario a little different. Kentucky playing with that momentum we're talking about. Louisville opens at Virginia. They've already played one road game at Virginia Tech. They're 0-1 in the ACC in that early December game. They're going to play at Virginia. That's their next game after tonight. Was it a 10, 11-day break? 13. For 13. Yeah. Fall away white and one. Jordan yeah. Burks into the lineup for the Wildcats for the first time, and Trey White makes him pay for his first foul. Kentucky has lost their edge just a little bit. I know they're still up 20, but 
I mean, one thing Birch does have is a motor that is nonstop. I feel bad for his mom growing up because I'm sure this kid was all over the place. <laughs> But that's also what's going to make Burks a good player one of these days. But again, you lose your discipline, your balance, and lunge at a shooter. Here's White, the sophomore transfer from Southern Cal from Dallas. And he gets the three point trip. On oh, 19 point lead here for Kentucky with Wagner, Dillingham, Edwards. Reeves and Bradshaw on the deck for Coach Calipari. Edwards into traffic with the left hand. And a core four fouled by Aaron Bradshaw. That's his fourth. Edwards is the one guy that to me has not found his groove yet. There was talk about Edwards coming into the season that he was in position to be the number one overall pick and that's certainly not how the level he's played up to. Strength and his stroke will be the determining factors of his future. He needs to put on strength and that stroke, 25%. Man, that's, yeah. that's tough when you think about the next level. Here's White with Reeves defending. McCora for has given Coach Payne some nice minutes here. Through traffic, Emmanuel slipped it by White, but out of the corner, Johnson strong with a three. Wagner and the Cats with Reeves at the back end. Rattled out, just his second miss from the floor, and Edwards follows. And that's what Edwards needs to be. He needs to be a phenomenal defender, a glass eater, and a guy that just makes plays around that rim. And Clark will be fouled by Mitchell on the way up. Second on Mitchell. That is seven fouls on Kentucky, on Kentucky with 8.47 to play. Wes, the, the discipline that Kentucky runs to in those deep corners and conversion offense, it's really, really impressive. And you get what you demand as a coach. And Cal, from the opening practice, when I was back there for the Kentucky Pro Day, he kept talking about how we've got to win the race to the corner, and then we play from there. And his kids are really, really good at it. A couple of free throws for Sky Clark. His dad, Kenny, was a veteran NFL wide receiver. And he was a must-get guy out of Illinois for yeah. Kenny Payne. One of my favorite things about this kid, two of his favorite music artists, Bob Marley yeah. and Frank Sinatra. I like that. There's a lot of ground between yeah, Bob there. Marley and Frank Sinatra, but he Reverse. likes them both and makes it work for him. Yeah. Still can't believe Jack Harlow didn't make it tonight. <laughs> you know, I, that, Don't let it ruin your Christmas, The Jimmy. game was important, but meeting Jack Harlow was secondary. Yeah. Out of bounds, it'll stay with the cats. Don't let it don't let it impact the rest of the it holiday. Could. No, it could. Yeah. <laughs> Calipari. There he is. John, by the way, tonight with a win would have 396 at Kentucky, 841 in his career. He's had 28 of his 31 years. His teams have won 20 or more. 11 years, they've won 30 or more. That well, is an amazing stat. He's on top of his game once again as the Kentucky head coach. And the swagger that his young team played with last Saturday. Think about it. Those Kentucky freshmen, West, they scored 18 of the final 20 points for Kentucky hmm. in a big boy game against North Carolina. Yeah. And Cal knows he's got a group that's capable of getting that next national championship for Kentucky. Not saying they're the favorites, but they will be in the conversation. Yep. Here's Reeves on the drive, blocked from behind White. And with eight and a half to go, Johnson and Louisville trying to find something here offensively. Louisville shooting under 39% in the second half. White to dunk. And yeah, Kentucky's inability to choke off that drive and allow that 45 degree cut with ease. And Edwards squeezes in. They are really fast at 94 feet. All, everyone that Cal puts on the floor can really, really run. And Bradshaw and Onion, so actually runs better than Bradshaw. Huntley Hatfield. And here's Tyler Johnson. Threw it away. Clark will run it down. That's over and back. 
And that will get us to a time. The resume in college basketball right now belongs to Purdue. And Rick Barnes has seen some offensive yes, rebounds. He has. He's had some good ones himself. Yes, he has. Dillingham, right back for Edwards. Three ball. That's really good action, man. Kentucky comes out that timeout. And they get three or four touches with a little bit of that dribble drive action, and Edwards just stops from behind it. Yep. Pretty good stroke for a 25% shooter. Absolutely. First three of the night for Edwards, eighth of the year. Shepard for Wagner, deflected Clark. <laughs> 22 point lead for the Cats. Trying to win their third straight, be seven of their last eight going to a holiday break. Out of the corner, James. Huntley Hatfield, another rebound. Put it back up, Bradshaw raked it out of there. Possession. Pat Adams calls the hell ball, and it will stay with the cards. Huntley Hatfield now 14 and 10, Jimmy. He's got his third straight double-double. He has been the bright spot. He's not missed a shot yet, has he, right? Seven for seven in this game. Transfer from Tennessee, who a year ago averaged just five points and five rebounds. Clark, a triple. Rings the bell for Sky Clark. He is a talent. You know, he started the first 12 last year at Illinois before he stepped away in the second semester and hmm. put his name in that portal in March. Wagner, been kind of a balky night. DJ is scoreless. Came in averaging 12.8. There's Edwards, and he'll take the contact and score. And now, Lee Cassell out from the basket by Edwards. And Ron Gruber telling John Calipari to go to the bench here. And honestly, Jimmy, I didn't see what happened here. Edwards, there we go. The, put the two small on him, and Clark hits the free throw. It's part of the immaturity still. It's in that freshman class. Edwards, a terrific kid. They, they don't have a bad kid at, on Kentucky's roster, but there's still growth in front of these guys. I like their fire, I like their fight, I like, I like their passion for the game, their love for the game of ball. It resonates every time I watch them. Edwards will learn from that moment. So here is Louisville trailing 19 now. And Clark to work. On the drive, the scoop, no. On Yenso, on the floor now for the Wildcats. Not a high percentage of layups made by Louisville in this game because of the length of Kentucky. That trail threat shot of Mitchell is hot. Yep. And he steps into the ball with a lot of rhythm. As Kentucky guards, man, they throw strikes. They don't throw bad passes to shooters. Inside, White had it deflected. Here comes Shepard into the front court. Trail three again, Jimmy. Yeah, it's money. Uh, Trey Mitchell, the high percentage shooter that he is, is 4-3 in the game. And that's easy money for Kentucky. Appreciate the... It's 25 is the advantage now for Kentucky. James had it blocked by Onyenso, out of bounds. Wow. You gotta. My heavens. Seven feet, 250 pounds, a sophomore from Awiri in the Emo state of Nigeria. Wes, well, he gets to the ball fast. He had three blocks in nine minutes against North Carolina. A lot of guys rebound out of, it, out of their area. He blocks shots out of his area awfully well for a young kid. Long three by White is good. Quickly comes Kentucky. One dribble and a pass already into the front court. You've seen some spurts 
from Louisville, but just not the consistent play. And that's been their problem, not just this year, but last year. They only won four games last year. And this is a Louisville program that's, they're not supposed to be down like that. Shepard's got a season high, career high 10 assists tonight. Turned over Clark. Trail shot for Williams. He's on the line, just lack of awareness of where he was, Williams. But I like this kid. He's a runner up to Mr. Michigan basketball, but he's got a really good stroke. I believe he made three threes in their last game against Pepperdine. Reeves through traffic, and on the second try, he will draw the foul. A couple of free throws coming up. Don't forget Christmas Day on the ESPN family of networks. You get five, count them, five great NBA games presented by State Farm. Bucks and Knicks start at noon in the Garden. How about Golden State, Denver at 2.30? You think you can pull away from the table for some of that? <laughs> then Boston and L.A.? Who doesn't like that matchup? I live with two girls and two dogs. Sixers in heat. <laughs> Mavs and Suns wrap it up <laughs> out in the Valley on ESPN and the ABC. Tell you what, the Warriors and Nuggets, that'll make you move away. You'll, yes. you'll find a TV for that. No, I'll, I'll get my eyes on it. <laughs> Reeves has got 29 now in the ball game tonight. Well, there's over 4,000 wins, 11 national titles, 27 Final Fours combined between yep. Kentucky and Louisville. And, and Louisville's got to rise back up. This is not where this program is supposed to be. They are one of the top brands in college basketball, although they have not been that over the last three or four years. But they got to get this thing corrected in a hurry. Kenny Payne understands it. There'll be a lot of conversation after this game. And, you know, Josh Hurd was the interim AD when he hired Kenny Payne, which tells you that the Board of Trustees, former players, boosters had a lot to do with that decision. And Josh Hurd, all, I think what he's looking for right now is, are we seeing progress under Kenny Payne as this second season gets started?
Kentucky fans have hung around in the Yum Center to revel in what will be their fifth win in the last six of this series and their ninth in the last 11. And they've now won 14 of the 24 games played in Louisville in the series. Talk about Dillingham's got the juice, man. Is it? He is a phenomenal athlete. I mean, he's 6'2", but the pop that he plays with and the courage. I mean, that's the kind of talent you have to have, not only to handle this SEC that Kentucky's going to chew into, but this is a program that's also supposed to be in that Final Four mm. on a regular basis. And I just think they have that look again is the best way to describe this Kentucky team. Percy Miller's first free throw of the year is good, his fourth appearance. Bradshaw is out. Here comes Walker Horn in the game. Joey Hart, Kareem Watkins on the floor along with Jordan Burks. And Coach Cal gets to go home and wrap up a pair of $14.99 <laughs> britches to give to somebody or himself on Christmas Day. Yeah. 95-75. Turned over. Here's McCool Miller launching. And a core for the rebound inside. And rolled off the rim foul will be on Walker Horn so the so the Syracuse quarterback is number 89 Dan Valari from Massapequa Long Island yes. okay so that he was a tight end but then because of all the injuries he's now the quarterback yeah, all the quarterbacks for Syracuse are injured I guess so and so Valari who was a high school quarterback originally signed at Michigan and then you know what happens in today's world in the portal yeah. comes to Syracuse originally a quarterback moved to tight end because in all honesty his best prospects as a pro player are at tight end really yes sir well I'm going straight to my room I'll be there quickly because they're across the street <laughs> I, I've never seen a quarterback wear number 89 he's still wearing 89 yes sir okay I mean just think of it like this Jimmy Red Grange was one of football's greatest icons. He wore 77. <laughs> Final oh, half man. minute here at the Yum Center tonight. <laughs> I didn't think I would be so inclined to watch the RoofClaim.com Boca Raton Bowl. Mm. I'll be in Boca Raton after the first of the year to watch Florida Atlantic. I'm, I'm yeah. excited about that one. You know you're only a mile and three-tenths from the beach, right? Here's Horn. Derbyshire. In the corner, Watkins, and the rebound for Glenn, and that will be that tonight here at the Yum Center. Wes, it's great to be with you, man. Jimmy, my Merry pleasure. Merry Christmas. Happy yep. holidays. I know you're headed to a bowl game tomorrow night. Yep. And that will do it. 95-76. Kenny Payne, John Calipari, the embrace. Thanks to Matt Bartley, Matt Wilson.